Have you ever been scared of travelling? I have to admit something. When I first arrived in Mumbai, I was scared. The city's sensory overload overwhelmed me and the thought of visiting a slum seemed quite daunting. But as I immerse myself in the experience, I realise that Mumbai is a city that challenges your perspective and it forces you out of your comfort zone. So let me show you what I mean. We're now leaving Alibug and catching a ferry directly to Mumbai. It's an enjoyable trip as you watch the majestic ships and oil rigs in the Arabian Sea. The ferry arrives at the gateway of India. We just caught a taxi. About three, four hours for sightseeing. I can give you my card and I will take you a good price I can make you. And if you're satisfied, give me money. No, don't give me one rupee also. We're now staying at the Four Seasons Hotel. Up here it's really another world. But as luxurious as this hotel is, I want to see the real Mumbai. So let's go. A 30 second walk from the hotel and you're surrounded by the aroma of spices and sizzling street food and the sound of car horns and street vendors that fill your ears. I feel like the locals are looking at me strangely. Everywhere I looked, it's like there was a, a story to tell. There's so much energy here, and it's no wonder with a population of over 21 million people. Mumbai has the highest number of millionaires and billionaires in the country. I suppose that's why they call it the city of dreams. It's nice when you come back to your room and you find a surprise. And that, I didn't even tell them who I was or what I did. And yet, look, they found me and gave me this gift. Thank you so much, Four Seasons. Tonight, we're having dinner at the Sanchi restaurant, which is part of the hotel. We started with this delicious Asian wok cooked lobster in garlic sauce and Asian vegetables. Look how beautiful that looks. Followed by an amazing tandoori cooked butter chicken and Asian vegetables. So that's the specials of the day, it's a path budgie. You get this crispy bun and um, yeah, you dip it into here. Onion and coriander, tomato onion. So this is a traditional Indian breakfast called dosa. You've already probably seen it, but this is a, a different version. Of it. This has got potato inside. Today I'm feeling a little bit anxious about what we're about to see. Our first stop was the Dobby Gat, an open air laundromat. Yes. You want to see inside? I'm just looking. Yeah, we have the rules for the visitors, sir. Are yeah. you shut your camera up? Sure. This is the world's largest outdoor laundry, and it's been in operation for over a century. It's a bustling area with a local washerman known as Dobies work tirelessly. These gloomy working tunnels give the impression of nighttime, despite it being the middle of the day. The washing is done in open troughs where clothes are soaked, beaten, and scrubbed. 
They are hung on these pegless clothesline to dry in the sun. Despite the primitive washing methods, the clothes that come out of Dobby Gut are impeccably clean and pressed. Now take a guess whose house this is. We were so warmly welcomed by a friendly receptionist. This is the Gandhi House, also known as Mani Bhavan, a historical building located in Mumbai. This is a place where Mahatma Gandhi lived from 1917 to 1934, when he was a prominent figure in the Indian independence movement. The house is now a museum that attracts tourists from all over the world. The museum displays a collection of photographs, letters, books and other artefacts related to Gandhi's life and work. This temple is a well-known Jain temple constructed in 1904 by a rich Jain merchant family. The temple has a unique blend of traditional and modern styles. Its architecture features carved marble pillars and domes. The Jains believe in the concept of karma, reincarnation and follow a strict vegetarian diet that can also avoid root vegetables. They also believe in practicing non-violence, which extends to not causing harm to any living being including animals and insects. Dexter. Crawford Market is one of the oldest and busiest markets in Mumbai. Inside the market, there's over 600 stalls selling a variety of items such as fresh produce, flowers, spices, dry fruits, meats, seafood. Everything's here. There's also shops selling clothing, jewellery and household items. One of the unique features, and certainly not my favourite, is the pet section, which sells a variety of pets such as birds, dogs, cats, and fish, turtles, you name it. Just look at this one. Curry, masala, it's green curry. You can find some of the best organic spices here, so it's really well worth buying if you're coming here. Frying pans. Chapati, chapati. <laughs> ah, chapati. <laughs> chapati. <laughs> okay, so I really don't know what to expect in this place. It's located in the south of Mumbai, and believe it or not, that part is actually the poshiest part. It's an area with a rich history and culture, and it's one of the oldest and most densely populated slums in the city. Now, like all slums, this community faces numerous challenges, such as overcrowding, inadequate sanitation, and limited access to basic amenities like clean water, healthcare, and also education. You're going to the school? Yes. Yeah. How old are you? I am 16. 15? 16. 16, okay. When you finish school? Last year. Last year. Oh, okay. <laughs> the government only provides access to water for two hours each day. Now this can create chaos and panic as you watch the residents scramble to collect water for their daily needs. Now I want you to brace yourself, as the following part will probably shock you. And I'm not even sure I should be showing you this, but I think it needs to be told. From what I can gather, there are no toilet facilities here. 
people living here are forced to defecate in the open into the sea using this concrete strip as their toilet base. Now there is some discussion about the government making changes to address this situation and I'm hopeful that they will take action soon. The condition of this area deeply disturbed me. It's left me feeling both shocked and honestly deeply saddened. Despite these challenges, the people of Kalaba are known for their strength and resourcefulness. Many of the residents work in nearby businesses and shops, while others are involved in informal economic activities such as recycling and waste management. While residents may face significant challenges and struggles, it's important to recognise their resilience and strengths. The average income in Kalaba is around $150 US per month. The Kalaba Laundry is a remarkable laundry service that's operated by the residents of this local slum. The laundry workers collect the customers' dirty clothes and use these large concrete vats filled with soapy water to wash them by hand. The clothes are then rinsed and hung out to dry on lines that are strung between the buildings in these narrow alleyways of the slum. Despite living under these challenging conditions, the workers take great pride in their work and they provide efficient and affordable service. While driving, we came across a festive occasion and discovered that it was a wedding ceremony. One of the guests graciously extended an invitation to join in the celebration. And so we did. So even though I was a little scared to travel to India, it turned out to be an amazing experience that I'll never forget. If you're ever feeling nervous about taking a leap, whether it's travelling or anything else, just remember that stepping outside of your comfort zone is where you learn and grow the most. So don't be afraid to try new things and see where they take you. So don't miss out on the last episode of our India video series where we take you on a tour of the famous Taj Mahal Hotel and showcase their exceptional Mediterranean cuisine. We also have exclusive interviews with the chefs and a visit to the historic Leopold Cafe in Mumbai which still bears the scars of the tragic terrorist attacks even today. <laughs>